myself.
I have decided to torture myself today by learning things that I don't know. It's like in Spider-Man where he messes with things he doesn't understand. <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm looking at my video, group chat right now. a few of the many advanced techniques that this game has to offer. Some of these advanced techniques were better. I'm going to, like, watch Invet's text, and I'm going to look up what it means. There we go. Better for some fighters than others. While the rest are easy. This, by the way, this video is made by Too Cozy before I get copyrighted. So, yeah. There it is. Can't copyright me anymore. Truly is beneficial to the whole roster. In this video, we will be covering a few of the many advanced techniques that this game has to offer. Some of these advanced techniques work better for some fighters than others, while the rest are equally as beneficial to the whole roster. There are more advanced techniques out there like wall jumping, teching, DI, and auto canceling moves. These are just a few that I thought many people didn't really do that much or at all. If you would like a follow up video with these or other advanced techniques, let me know in the comments below. And as a quick disclaimer, for some of these techniques, it's recommended to set your controller layout to tilt stick and trigger jumps, since it'll make some of these a lot easier to pull off. But I have shoulder jumps for R. Ready? I volunteer to not be guilty. Ultimately, it's up to you. The That's first technique we'll be covering is attack canceling. What this pretty oh, much this? does is that it cancels a move into a short hop buffered area. So how does this work? In this game, you can cancel certain moves into a jump by entering the jump within the first few frames of the move coming out. This will cancel the move and give you a jump with a buffered aerial, meaning this is the fastest the game will allow you to do so. If you flick the analog stick in a certain direction while you do this, you will get a certain aerial. For example, if you hold it back, you will get a back air. Hold it up, get an up air. Hold it down for a down air, etc. So let's take a closer look. Here I input a forward tilt in the direction that I'm facing and I quickly tap jump to get an attack cancel. That's the most basic way of looking at it. Now if I do this again, but this time as I press jump, I also move the analog stick backwards to get a back air. Attack canceling is insanely useful in a lot of situations because you can turn yourself around as quickly as the game will allow. It can work from a standstill or after a run, and is great for combos at low percentage. The bad thing is that since it's a buffered aerial, you can only short up out of an attack cancel, so full hops won't work. However, that brings us to our second technique, its counterpart, the reverse aerial rush. This one is executed slightly differently, but it works with both short hops and full hops, so you can use it at high percentages for certain setups. When your fighter is in the full running animation, they will perform a turnaround animation when you turn uh, the analog stick the opposite. This won't work. The bad thing is that since it's a buffered aerial, you can only short hop out of an attack cancel. So full hop. In, I can roar. However, that brings us to our second technique, its counterpart. Yeah. The reverse aerial rush. This one is executed slightly differently, but it works with both short hops and full hops, so you can use it at high percentage. When your fighter is in the full running animation, they will perform a turnaround animation to turn the analog stick in the opposite. This is really laggy, and for the most part, you want to avoid this animation by dash dancing. However, you can cancel this animation into a jump, giving you a reverse jump. All you have to do at this point is throw out the aerial in the traditional way for the most part. trying to get a full hop reverse aerial, but make sure to implement both of these equally since they are both huge to your game. The next technique is called the boost pivot tilt. Similar to reverse uh, aerial rush, which involves your turnaround animation, this time we're going to cancel it into the The rest of the is your forward tilt, but feel free to grab out other moves if you wish. What this does is extend your forward tilt range by a slight amount. Alright, this one I want to learn. So. So then you're going to skid and... Alright.
Alright. Let me get Young Link back. Alright, so let's see. It's called Boost Pivot Zone. Which can make it better for approaching and poking means. You first have to input a dash, turn around, and once you see that turnaround animation, you input a forward tilt back in the direction you were originally facing. This will allow you to keep your momentum from the turnaround animation and have it be effective with the forward tilt. This will make it go slightly further, which works better for some fighters than others. And similar to Boost Pivot Tilt, we got the Boost Grab. Keep in mind this doesn't only work for grabs, but it makes certain grab options better, so a grab is usually the recommended follow up afterwards. In this game, you can grab while standing still or while dashing, also called a dash grab. Dash grabs are laggier than standing grabs, making them more committal, which is where the boost grab comes in. If you hold forward to get a dash and immediately tap, you can grab. Works better for some. First, have to input a dash. Turn around, and once you see that turn around. So, when the moment you skid, forward tilt. Alright. On animation, you input a forward tilt back in the direction you were originally facing. This will allow you to keep your momentum from the turnaround animation and have it be effective with the forward tilt. This will make it go slightly further, which works better for some fighters than others. And similar to boost pivot tilt, we got the boost. I'm sorry. Look at this real quick. Nice up dog. Thank you. What what's up with you? I know that joke. You know what? Look at this! Look at this picture. And similar. <laughs> Poor Ridley, he's trying to bite Incineroar's hand off, and he's like, oh, "What you trying to do with your no teeth, head ass?" To boost pivot tilt, we got the boost grab. Keep in mind, this doesn't only work for grab, but it makes certain grab options better. So a grab is usually the recommended model. In this game, you can grab while standing still or while dashing, also called a dash. Grab. Dash grabs are laggier than standing. Grab. That's where the boost grab comes in. If you hold forward to get a dash and immediately tap down on the C stick, you will cancel your run animation and you will continue walking as long as you keep holding forward on the analog stick. This can give some fighters an insane like boost, sadly, and since you're walking and not running. Alright, hold on, I want to learn this. I also mean heavy, so I don't see how the road is. We said training with. How do you do that? L Y R. Yeah, L R A. Grab. Keep in mind this doesn't only work for grabs, but it makes certain grab options better. So a grab is usually the recommended follow up afterwards. In this game, you can grab while standing still or while dashing, also called a dash grab. Dash grabs are laggier than standing grabs, making them more committal. Which is where the boost grab comes in. If you hold forward to get a dash and immediately tap down on the C stick, you will cancel your run animation and you will continue walking as long as you keep holding. Hold on. Immediately tap down on the C stick, you will cancel your run animation. If you hold forward to get a dash and immediately tap down on the C stick, you will cancel your run animation and you will continue walking as long as you keep holding forward on the analog stick. This can get some better than insane moves, and since you're walking and not running. You will do a regular dash grab instead of a laggier dash grab. What the fuck? This can give some fighters an insane boost. And since you're walking and not running, you will do a regular standing grab instead of a laggier dash grab. And staying in the subject of grabs, pivot grabs are also a really good option to go for. By turning around and inputting a grab at the same time, you will perform a pivot grab. Which also gives your grab yeah. range. Yeah, Phantom, you do this all the time. For trying to catch land or roll options. You can also do these from a standstill or while running, so make sure to practice both. 
Next up, we have B reverse. B reverse is an option special move to continue in the opposite direction they were originally facing. There's two Hold on, I want to learn this real quick. Rollout, a really good option to go for. By turning around and inputting a grab at the same time, you will perform a pivot grab, which also gives you grab more range, making them ideal for trying to catch landings or roll options. You can also do these from a standstill or while running, so make sure to practice both. Next up, we have B reverses. B reverses allow certain special moves to be executed in the opposite direction of the original and inputting a Make machine follow. It does go from the start. For grabs, but it makes certain grab options better. So we got the boost grab. Keep in mind that it doesn't only work for grabs, but it makes certain grab options better. So a grab is usually the recommended follow up afterwards. In this game, you can grab while standing still or while dashing, also called a dash grab. Dash grab is the idea of standing grabs, making them better, which is where the boost grab comes in. If you hold forward to get a dash and immediately tap down on the C Hold forward to get a dash then tap down. Stick, you will cancel your run animation and you will continue walking as long as you keep holding forward on the analog stick. This can give some fighters an insane boost and since you're walking yeah. and not running. Alright. You will do a regular standing grab instead of a laggier dash grab. And staying in the subject of grabs. I can understand. Let's see. You're running. I'm I'm holding down the I keep on getting a freaking down tilt. Speaking of which on the topic of turning around, I wanna show you guys a cool trick. There. I wanna show you a cool trick with Chrome. It's easy with Chrome and Harder with Joker. His Joker skit is so good. Check this out. Oh, I'm not even showing it anything at all. Alright. Ready? Watch this slide. That's good for like hard reads. Like, watch. Hey, bud. But this is what I want to show you. <laughs> oh, and then I can buffer in there. How about this? I don't think you can do it with the. Okay, you can't do it with B because then it just buffers inside B. More style ledge run, you can shimmy and turbo I can't I can't turbo T bag, I can do this. If I can do this, I can buffer an F smash after an F tilt. Fun. You can buffer anything after an F tilt actually. But it's it's called the it's called the ledge run. I never heard of turbo tea bag or shimmy. Problem is actually nerds are running. If you look closely enough. And now, excuse me, I'm gonna pull off this high pass combo.
Okay, look, we'll just stop it there. I want to learn it with Incineroar. Or Sonic, because he's got to notice it. Well, Incineroar is the slowest character in the game. We're going to try the tech with him. Dribble teabagging is moving the stick forward, down, and repeating if we can teabag than anything else. Is that it? Is that it? I don't know. Fifty shades of downer. So basically, okay, so that's it. So compared to this, to this. And what shimmy? Hmm. So I'm gonna see what, okay. Comes out of the dash. Let's see what he's talking about. Pivot and you will continue walking as dash and immediately tap. If you hold forward to get a dash and immediately tap down on the C stick, you will can. So you just get the dash. So your run animation and you will continue walking as long as you keep holding forward on the analog stick. So you gotta cancel the dash. Hold on, let's see this. You know what? Get out of here, male corn. Not hype. How can an incinerator just not accidentally break his head? Alright, we're gonna. Alright, so that's the dash grab. Got it. So it's right out of dash. Oh, shoot. Okay, maybe I should unmod Streamlabs. Actually. Okay, yeah, maybe just not send it long. Just send it in slices. Like get out of the right. Okay, I gotta fix I'll put it in Discord, okay. Webcam. All right, that should be better. But let's see. So it's in the middle of like this smoky stuff. Gotcha. Or is it after he kicks up the smoke?
So it's as he kicks up the smoke. Gotcha. So corn is right there. Gotcha. <clears throat> Cover? Okay. Let's try one here. Ah, yes. Oh. We, I cannot dash against too well. Moment he kicks up behind him. Gotcha. And I'm gonna look at what you said. Shimming according to random murder. If you hold A after doing any tap. Then flip the C-stick in the opposite direction and it'll turn your character without lag or an animation like shown in the clip. You can keep walking in one direction while repeatedly picking... What? I don't get it. I love the the cow sound it makes. Like, look at look at listen to this. It's like a karate sound effect. Well, for try linking the Reddit post you're talking about. Why don't you get a footstool set up with this? Why do you deserve to have cancels? That's actually pretty useful.
All right. There's one thing I want to do. Joker. 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 And say Mario. Mario. Oh. Just give him six Be at the percentage. Say they're at 65. Our bear spam with Larson is a fair and balanced Obvious sarcasm. Yeah. This is called the La Fable. You can do it right, it's a two combo. Let me turn on the sound loops. Look at the combo counter. When they're not buffering shield or anything, when the characters are still, then it's um then it's actually telling the truth. True as long as they don't press any buttons. So it's true against most offline players, actually. And no, the only way you can get out of it is by SDIing as long as I don't screw up. MKLeo did it on Meister, and he only and Meister only got out of it because MKLeo did a fastball so it's not See it's at nine. You have to buffer the up air. Oh, wait, hold on. Stop. You don't know the character, just spam back there. Yesterday I got to like 30 or something on this.
This is going to be a pain to practice. Oh, right. You need that Mario Poggers face. I just got hit. The moment that I get it the second time, I always just screw up. See, look at that. Look, see, that's not true right there. Because I keep getting the third hit, I have to get the fourth. Look, I can just do this if I want. See how I got four hits when I only hit three? Because that one right there is true, that follow up. There you go. 20, 20, oh, 25. Clip that. Somebody please clip that right now. We need to, we need to review that. We need to clip that and see what happens. So please tell me you got that clip.
these two people. What? We hit 25. That'll be enough for now. Rip the clip, but... Hmm. Before we focus on the next tech, we're just going to play some items. So look. There's this combo called the nut. So we'll just have to make that seven. Oh, what's that? I'm gonna buck the roll. Ah! Almost had it. Like mid state. Do pummel, down throw, then jump and forward air. Rising forward air. Too late. Yeah. Well, I stuffed it. All right, let's see, this should be like right around here, and up. Just down throw, tumble down to the corner. Watch me pull this shit off. No! They interrupted the spike! And Mari's at the magic percent. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Duh, they interrupted the spike again. 69, let's go. Up this. Yeah. Up. Too late. Yeah. Oh, I didn't buffer the roll. Or maybe like 15, 14 percent. Yeah. 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 Oh, I fucked up. So long, gay boy. Ready? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. 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 Uh. 
I think I have to like let Nana do it. While I'm in the middle of the slam, Nana does it. Because I'm thinking I'm timing it way too late. Come on, Mario. You know what, boy? We don't even have to do it off lead. Next one. Oh, I interrupted it again. That was almost... Yeah, I know, I know. We can do from anywhere. Like, as long as she still spikes on the... Yeah, I know. She has to do it, like, as... Like, the moment I slammed them. But I can just do it from like I can just four throw and then just... Oh, I can just do this. Done. Where's the money? Up. I think I'm just afraid of like the worst that could happen. Almost had it. Okay. I just want to look at this frame by frame. Like seconds after, like frames after. Up. Oh, it's so hard to re grab that. Ah, maybe I should not dash grab. Okay, check that out. Uh, I 
All right, that, that should be good. That's not gonna work at all. I have to just stop being so anxious. I keep dash grabbing. I see. It's like, boom. It's four different inputs at the same time. Well, almost at the same time. Uh, at least I'm getting the timing down slowly. Um, now I just got to learn to stop dash grabbing. Up. Uh, too late. Let's go from zero. You know what? Let's just do this real quick. All right. Getting so sad. All right, come on. Uh. So I, have to, I forgot. I have to pummel. I have to pummel the desync nana. Watch. See if I can get the timing right if I have to get the switch. Aha. I keep timing it so badly.
Let's just look at the video again. Alright, we're gonna take a look at the video and how to do it. Hmm. Guide. Oh wait, I forgot to put on music. So that we can learn it together. Let's see. So I'm gonna teach you how to do this combo in steps. Step one is get the grab, do a down throw, and then hold the input for a forward roll. Practice this a few times before moving on to step two. Step two is the hardest part of the combo, in my opinion. You're going to do the same thing you did before. Grab, down throw, buffer forward roll, but when Nana reaches the peak of her jump right here, release the roll and do a short hop neutral air by pressing jump plus A. This is what it looks like at full speed. If you release the roll buffer too late, they'll both roll. Too early and then they'll both fit there. Early, they'll both do a neutral air. One special note, if your opponent is at 8% or less, you need to connect it with an up angled forward tilt instead of the neutral air. If they're at 8 to 20%, then you can do the neutral air like normal. Don't move on to step 3 until you can hit this pretty consistently. Step 3 is a little bit easier. After the neutral air comes out, you want to do a side B with Nana. Now step 4 is getting the grab with Popo. You want to make sure you're not moving too quickly or too slow because it's very easy to miss the grab as seen here. Step 5 is probably the chiller step. All it entails is getting one jab after getting the grab it's one jab or one step six is adding in that sexy forward air spike after you get the re-grab with popo you want to do a down throw jump and do a forward air you don't want to rush the inputs on this step if you put in the forward air too early it won't get the spike in box All right. I can see it now.
decent. We got it! We got it! Somebody clip that, please! We finally got it. Of course, it's with the Metopia music on, though. Let's focus on this. Okay, so it's down throw, and then the moment that your Topo or Nana's near, Topo goes near. And I'm talking like that. I'm playing as Nana. Ah, oh, damn, so close. At least you know we got it down, alright? One, one, one more time. That have killed from like to the left.
No, she interrupted it, but we still got it. I messed up the timing a tiny bit. But I still count that. I'll count that. I just wanted to make this clip. Damn, I'll count that. I'll definitely count that. Get back there, boy. Too close to ledge here. Too low of a percentage. But damn, I think that's enough ice climbers for now. Oh, I want to do one more thing.
her up, but at least we hit it. I think that's enough on um, Ice Climbers desyncing. Raining. Now we're gonna learn the advanced. This can give some fighters an insane boost. And since you're walking and not running, you will do a regular standing grab instead of a lap. Some fighters an insane boost. And since you're walking and not running, you will do a regular standing grab instead of a laggy or dash grab. And staying in the subject of grabs, pivot grabs are also a really good option to go for. By turning around and inputting a grab at the same time, you will perform a pivot grab, <laughs> which also gives your grabs more range, making them ideal for trying to catch landings or roll options. You can also do these from a standstill, or while running, so make sure to practice both. Next up we have B-reverses. B-reverses allow these. certain special moves to be executed in the opposite direction they were originally facing. There's two different methods to B-reverses. The first one is a traditional turnaround that makes the move come out in the opposite direction you were facing. This one is performed by jumping, tapping the analog stick to the opposite direction you're facing, and then tapping the special button. The second method is what's known as a true B-reverse. It does pretty much the same thing, but it alters your momentum from one side to the next, moving you more drastically to the other side. And it's executed almost backwards to the first method. You jump, tap the special button, and immediately after move the analog stick in the opposite direction you were facing. Again, some fighters benefit from this more than others, so make sure to implement it into your game. And lastly, we have what's known as a T-spike. It's really simple, but can be really effective at times. To do this, you simply grab onto ledge, let go of ledge, and come back up with a double jump rising down air, which will cover the ledge below you. This will allow you to successfully two-frame or edge guard your opponent while also landing back on stage and not giving up stage control. You can let go of ledge by tapping either back on the analog stick or downwards, but both work fine. This can work for all downers, even suicide downers, so add this into your arsenal as well. Yo, what's good, homies? Thank you so much for watching my video. Wow. Make sure to leave a like if you enjoyed. Oh, new to cozy video. I was to mix up your opponent. This video will showcase five simple ways in which you can mix up your opponent. <laughs> Cheeky Ganon. Mix up in any fighting game. And I have already released a general mix up guide which explains what mix ups are and why they are so important, along with one or two very. Let's go for that first. Mix-ups can be defined as mix-ups are one of the most important fundamentals in Smash and fighting games in general. A mix-up can be defined in many ways, but to me, it's the act of being in the same situation and picking different options. This is a very straightforward definition, but it's hopefully a more simple way for you to understand. There are way too many different types of mix-ups to cover, due to the large amount of fighter archetypes in this game. But everything here can be applied to most, if not all, characters, since we'll be covering this as simply as possible. And like always, I encourage you guys to let me know of anything I may have missed or misinformed in the comments below. Alright, so in really simple terms, take this scenario right here. I'm at a certain distance from my opponent, I approach in with a charging dash attack and get a hit. If your opponent is smart enough, they'll know that dash attack is beaten by shield. So next time they see you approach in a similar scenario later on, they'll probably shield. So the opportunity comes again. You dash in and they shield, but instead this time you grab them, since grab beats shield. This is the simplest way I can describe a mix-up, although it obviously goes a lot more in-depth than this. Now the next obvious option they will go for after getting beat by dash attack and dash grab is to spot dodge, since spot dodge beats grab. So again, the opportunity arises, you dash in, they spot dodge anticipating a grab, but you instead wait it out and punish with a short hot back air. So you see how every option has a counterplay? Every option has another option to punish it, but that option also has another option to cover it, 
if that makes sense. This is very important to keep in mind when mixing up your opponents. Like I said, that scenario is very basic, but it's also very common, which is why I used it. So I hope it helped you understand mix-ups a bit. Now obviously these aren't the only options your opponent can go for, which is why there are offensive mix-ups as well as defensive mix-ups. Opponent can go for, which is why there are offensive mix-ups as well as defensive mix-ups. Back in the scenario, you dash in for a dash grab, thinking the opponent will stay in shield, but instead they drop shield and jump. Now you are in disadvantage because you are in lag frame from the grab, so they can drop down with a fastball back air. That was a defensive mix-up, but now you're aware of that mix-up, so you might try to air to air their jump, which stay in up air, or forward air, which beats their jump. What if I do that little, the, the um, cease to cancel thing, then start walking, then just like shield them, or just anti-air them? And the next time, you try to go for the air to air again, but instead they position themselves and anti-air you with an up smash. And then if they have a rapid jab, they can simply hold Yep! Up. To beat your approach option. But then you can simply roll behind them, among other options. This literally goes on forever, so I think you get the idea. The chance for a mix-up happens all the time. Again, that was a very basic scenario, and even then you saw how complex it can get. Mix-ups are also very important while on the ledge, obviously for both offense and defense. You always want to try and mix up your ledge get-up option. There are four basic get-up options with regular get-up, roll, jump, and get-up attack. But there are two more obscure options such as drop-down double jump, or simply waiting, which is heavily slept on. Again, and please remember, every option can be beaten out by another one, so don't think you'll be getting back to the stage for free every time. You will get ledge trapped and punished every once in a while. Anyways, not only do you want to mix up which option you do, but you also want to mix up the timing. Grabbing ledge and immediately getting up isn't good, especially since most people pick the same one or two options. You want to mix it up and use all six. Immediate get up attack again. Aggressive options such as smash attacks or tilts, since they have invincibility all the way through. But the opponent can outspace your get up attack and punish it since it has so much end lag. Roll can get you out of some situations, and double jumping and coming up with an aerial or special move can be helpful at times too. Situations. Watch this slowly. That's actually pretty good. It's all very valuable to know, but at times it's straight up a better option to stay in the ledge for an extra second or two, since the opponent might commit to an option prematurely, and you can either punish or get away relatively free. Although you leave yourself open to a punish with, say, a down smash or a ledge trunk. And also remember that you should always mix up your option after you ledge get up. A lot of people regularly get up into a shield, which is easily beaten out by grabs. So mix it up with a regular get up into a roll or a jump, just to name a few options. Just don't pick the same option too much. So for this reason, ledge mix up timings are essential. Mix ups are also available after hit stun or if you're trying to recover or land back on stage. Most people immediately jump out of hit stun, which can be a good option if mixed up, obviously. But if you constantly go for it, double jump back airs cover these fairly well among many other character specific options. Really jump out of his stun, which can be a good option if mixed up, obviously. But if you constantly go for it, double jump back airs cover these fairly well, among many other character specific options. You can instead start switching up to air dodges, while also mixing those up between regular and directional air dodges. You can also stuff their approach with maybe a combo breaker or fast enough move. And if you don't think you're going to die, you can simply take the next hit in order to preserve all your resources and use them for a later time. And when recovering, make sure to not always go about it the same way. If you typically want to recover low and try to auto-snap to the ledge as best you can, 
but at times a middle or even a high recovery can be useful if the opponent thinks you will recover low. DI mix-ups are also a thing, such as if you think the opponent will DI in to avoid a kill throw. You can instead throw them in another direction that will maybe kill them with a true confirm or another follow-up. Once you properly understand mix-ups and how they work, you can start using mix-ups to condition your opponent. Conditioning is another big fundamental. However, I have already covered this in a previous video, so take a look at that one if you would like some more info on conditioning. But yeah, that's pretty much the best way I can explain mix-ups. And like I said, there are many, many more examples of this that I didn't cover. But pretty much knowing your character and opponent's character's options, being patient and recognizing their patterns and habits, and being confident in yourself is a great way to successfully mix up your opponent. Yo, what's good, homies? Thank you so much for watching my video. Make sure to leave a like if you enjoyed or if you found it helpful in any way. Don't be afraid to comment below on any questions or video suggestions you might have, anything you would like to add, how I can improve my future videos, anything else you can think of. I love feedback from you guys and I respond to all comments as long as they're positive and respectful. You can also follow me on all my social media to stay up to date on my current projects. Make sure to join my Discord server if you would like some coaching lessons or just to hang around. And make sure to join my Discord server if you would like some coaching. All right. You never have to slow down at work. Probably just continue this later. Pick a main. Uh. 
man. Joker! So it turns out that Now it's time to try the left hobble. Okay, maybe I should practice this off screen for now. But I'll stream back to the TV tonight or tomorrow. So thank you. Okay. Good night. We'll see who to raid now. Um, I should probably raid Void. Camera's on. This is actually happening. Camera. <laughs> what happens when you're in the middle of a call and need to conduct your business? Introducing BRB Bot from Shun. It creates a digital doppelganger to stand in for you on video calls and features a range of human reactions, such as laughing at your boss's terrible jokes, reacting to being told you're working all weekend, and much more. BRB Bot is the latest way Charmin is innovating how you enjoy the go. Uh, definitely play what you're comfortable with, especially in the Toronto area. Um, you, uh, it's 